So you might be wondering, why is this even a question? Most people are already familiar with animals. There is probably not a single day where you don't encounter an animal. If I ask a random person to name 20 animals, anyone could probably do it, given some time to think. You probably know clearly that deer is an animal, raven is an animal, turtle is an animal, shark is an animal, butterfly is an animal, jellyfish is an animal, sponge also an animal, but maybe some of you don't know, who knows. But have you ever thought to yourself, why is it an animal? Is this an animal? Nope. Is this an animal? Nope. Is this an animal? Yes. Is this an animal? Yes. Is this an animal? Also, yes. When you delve deeper, sometimes it doesn't seem that obvious. So, today, I would like to raise the question, what exactly is animal? Before we begin, for those of you who are wondering, the word animal came from the word animalis, which means those with souls. It dates back to Aristoteles' biology and his concept of soul. According to Aristoteles, there are three types of soul, nutritive, sensitive, and rational. Minerals don't have souls. Plants, only the nutritive souls. Animals, both the nutritive and sensitive souls. Mankind has all three. But hey, don't worry about it. Let's move on. Around two centuries ago, animals are divided into two categories, protozoa and metazoa. Protozoa means early animals, while metazoa means later animals. Metazoa consists of almost all multicellular animals, while protozoa mostly consists of the unicellular ones. At that time, protozoa also includes what is considered to be a lower multicellular animal, such as rotifers, corals, sponges, and so on. In the present, when zoology says animals, what it means is everything in the kingdom Animalia, which is basically the clade metazoa, which means all the multicellular ones, including those that were once considered to be a protozoa. The rest of the protozoa, those unicellular ones, well, not animal. So, what exactly differentiate animals with other organism? First, animals are eukaryote, which means they have an endomembrane system. Within their cells, the nucleus and some of the organelles are surrounded by membrane. Second, among the eukaryote, animals are multicellular, which means each individual animal consists of numerous cells. Animals are these characteristics with plants and fungi. What differentiates animals from plants and fungi is that animal doesn't have cell wall. And yeah, those three characteristics could be used to identify whether an organism is an animal or not. You could further say that among the multicellular eukaryotes, animals and fungi are heterotrophs, which means they don't produce their own food. And while fungi digest food using enzymes outside their bodies and absorb nutrients, animals ingest their food. But do be careful with the answer though, because some animal doesn't necessarily ingest their food. For example, tapeworms. They absorb nutrients from the surface, but they are, indeed, an animal. Slime mold might in a way look like an animal. They could aggregate into a greater swarm that looks like a multicellular organism that ingests food and doesn't have cell wall. But individually, they are still a unicellular organism. So, looking at the similarity, which one is the closest relatives to animals? Is it a fungi? Or perhaps the slime mold? Or maybe even plants? Well, it's neither of those. It's actually the Quanoflagellata which is a free-living unicellular organism. 
Not so simple, isn't it? But well, again, don't worry about it. Alright, now that we get the answers already, everything should be clear, right? Well, not necessarily. Think about it. Do all zoologists have to check the cells of an allegedly animal to confirm whether it is an animal? Probably not, right? There are several reasons to why zoologists don't do that. Mainly, it's just simply inefficient. Besides that, it's just not viable to be done some of the time. Think about those old fossils. Surely zoologists couldn't check their cells. So, how could they say it is an animal? Well, zoologists could use the technique that may sound very simple. Comparison and association. For example, if you know that a reindeer is an animal, surely an elk is also an animal. I mean, they look and act quite similar, don't they? And so, if an elk is an animal, then probably a chef retains is also an animal. They also do look quite similar after all, and so on and so on. This concept is used to identify fossil. Fossils are almost never found whole. Some fossils are just fragments of an organism. Nevertheless, as long as there is something to compare and associate, scientists could probably identify the fossil. At least, determine what it most likely is. For example, these fossils. Those looks like deer antlers. Hence, probably they came from a deer, or at least, deer-like creature. Well, you know, deers are animal, which means, this fossil is probably an animal. Same with this creature. During the time of its discovery, it is one of the weirdest creature ever. Well, perhaps even still. Luckily, in the same fossil deposit, another fossil was found. That fossil, which is called Canadia, seems to be similar to the current marine Polycada. Since this creature is similar to the Canadia, this creature is also, probably, a Polycada. Well, years later, it is found that this creature which is then called Hallucigenia, is probably not similar to Canadia at all. But hey, still an animal though. So, again, don't worry about it. At least you get the point. Oh, by the way, this comparison can be done not only by comparing the physical traits, but also other traits. For example, behavior, ecology, physiology, and even molecular traits, such as DNA sequence. And so, there you go. That is animal, the creature that zoologist studies, at least as of now. What we know about animals might change in the future, and so, how we define an animal might also change. But hey, don't worry about it. Zoologists will just tackle that when, or if, that new discovery ever happened. For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. <laughs>